Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to take your check register database and find gaps in the sequence. So if you wrote out 101, 102, 104, it'll tell you 103 is missing. Or whatever you don't have there. See, it'll give you a nice little list, right? Today's question comes from Carlos in Pflugerville, Texas. One of my platinum members, Carlos says, I'm using your check registered template. Is there any way to quickly figure out if there are any missing checks from the register? For example, if I've got 101, 102, 104, 105, I'd like the database to tell me 103 is missing. Yes, Carlos, of course we can do this. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I had like probably five different ways in my brain that I could think of. You could use a record set loop. You could use a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest and most efficient way to do it. Are there better methods? Yeah, sure, but I think this will work for most people. Now the database that Carlos is talking about is the one we built in my check register tech help video. It's right there, the video itself is free and you can build the database along with me. I am going to grab a copy of the template which this is available for gold members. So again, another reason to join, you can just grab a copy of the database. Now we got a lot of prerequisites for this class. Uh, we're gonna be, of course, using some VBA. This is a developer level video. So if you've never used any VBA before, go watch this. It's about 20 minutes long, it'll get you started. We're gonna use the if function, immediate if. It's basically if then in a can, right? It's one function that does an if then statement. We're gonna need some type conversion functions, specifically CLNG, C long, convert a number to a long, because the check number in this database is stored as a string value. I did that for a couple of reasons. We're gonna use the isNumeric function. I just did this video a couple days ago, in fact, so go watch this. We're gonna use a for next loop to loop through our checks to see if they're there or not, right? We're gonna figure out the lowest check number, the highest check number, and then loop through them and see if they're in the database. We're going to use the NZ function, null to zero. And of course, you should know what null is and is null and is not null and all those null related null things. You should know what variables are and how to declare them. And to figure out the lowest check number, we're going to use dmin. To figure out the highest check number, you guessed it, dmax. And to see if that check exists in the middle, we're gonna use the grandpappy of them all, the DLOOKUP function. Now these are all free videos, they're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel, go watch all of those, and then come on back. All right, so this is the check register database that we built in that tech help video way, way, many, many moons ago. I was gonna say, this guy is, what, let me see the date here, four years old, did it in 2020. Way back when, before I even had the tech help free template. And it's pretty simple, here it is. All right, there's your check number, your date, your description, blah, blah, blah. I do have a more advanced template in a seminar available where you can do multiple accounts and there's reporting and all kinds of stuff. And I'll, I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. But for this simple one, we just simply want to say, okay, what's the lowest check number in here? Then what's the highest check number in here? And then who's missing between those, right? Now, since this is text, and I stored these as text because you might want to put other stuff in here you know, if you might like, you know, uh, uh, you know, e, e file deposit, whatever. I, I sometimes I put other things like that in my check number field. So we just want to check for the numeric value. So we're going to make a query that's only going to show us the numeric values from this field here. So let's close this. Let's create a query. Create query design. Bring in the check register table, the only table in the database. All right, I'm going to bring in for this particular query, we just need the ID and the check number. I don't care about all the rest of the fields here at all. And now here, we're going to determine if it's numeric or not. And if it is numeric, then we're going to put the long integer version of that check number here. Otherwise, we're going to leave it null. I want it empty. Okay, so let's zoom in, shift F2. I'm going to say, let's call this LNG check number. This will be the long of the check number. If something what's the something well if the check number is a numeric value so we'll use is numeric of check num that's a string value if that's true then this is going to be equal to clng of the check number otherwise if it's false put a null here 
See that? It's if this, if it's true, put that. If it's false, put that. Okay, hit OK. Let's save this. Let's call this my check number Q. And now if I run it, you can see there we go. And notice these are string values, so they line up on the left side of the field, whereas numeric values always line up on the right side of the field, including dates. Now, for this one, for the purposes of this query, I don't care about all the non-numeric values. So we're going to come down here and put a criteria on it as well. Is not null. So I don't care about all those. I just want to see the numbered items. See that? Pretty straightforward, right? All right, now that I've got this and take, you know, I, I like to take a little screenshot of this and I put it on my, you know, drop it in paint or whatever, put it, you know, just so you have it somewhere so you can see what the fields and stuff are. So you don't think I got to flip back over here and remember what your fields and stuff, all that name are. Okay, save changes, yes. Let's go back to our form now and let's put a button right down here. Design view, grab a button, drop it there, cancel the wizard, and we'll change the caption so it says find missing or whatever you want it to say. All right, let's give the button a name over here. Find missing button. Okay, right click, build event. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what's the smallest check number in the table. All right, we'll need a variable to store this in, so dim min check num as a long. Okay, min check num equals nz that's our null to zero d min what field lng check num from the check number q and if that returns a null give me a zero okay so go to the query find the smallest check number long check num that's the calculated field we created okay if it doesn't exist, if this returns a null, if there are no check numbers, we're gonna get a zero. And then what we'll do is we'll say here, if min check num equals zero, then message box, no checks found, exit sub, just like that. A little colon is what you can use to put two really short lines next to each other so you don't need a whole if, then, and if, okay? So this should find the minimum check number. Let's just message box it real quick to make sure it's working. Message box. Uh, we'll just say min and min check num. Okay, save it, debug compile real quick, come back over here, let's close it, close it, open it, and hit the button. Bing, there's one on one. Perfect. If I happen to have something in here that's like 44 and hit the button, that's lower, so we're good. Okay, okay, so that's working so far. Now let's do the same thing, we'll find the max one, the max of those, same thing, right? Max check num, and I'm literally just gonna copy and paste this. Watch, copy, paste, all right? We got max check, oh, forgot to define it, as a long, all right? Max check num is gonna be D max of the long check number from the same query. If max check num equals zero, then no checks found. Same thing, right? Let's just take a look at the max now. Max check now. Save it. Debug. Compile. Come back out. Meow. Hit the button. Boom. And there's a 104. Okay, so we've got the max and the min checks in here, and we've checked to make sure that there are checks. Now what we're going to do, since we know the smallest one and we know the largest one, we're going to loop through them and check for every check number in the middle. Why? Well, so you know, sometimes you take a check. Like I keep a check, an emergency check in my laptop bag. So if I'm traveling and I, I need check i've got one there but it's not registered in my thing right so it's missing <laughs> um but that's why you might run into the situation or you might have a situation where you you, you skip the checkbook right you got the little box full of checkbooks right and you accidentally went from the 500s to the 800s and you missed the ones in the middle i've done that before too <laughs> so it's nice to know where your gaps are all right, so next up, we're going to make a for next loop in here to loop through all of those checks and see if they're in the table. And we're going to do that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. You know the drill. If you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in about five minutes. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you tomorrow for part two.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members 
get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.